maybe in a comfortable cross-legged seat on your mat. You might like to take the flesh of the bottom back, resting your hands on your thighs, and take a moment to play with the alignment of your neck, drawing it forward, drawing it back. And then finding its perfect alignment where the skull rests on top of the spine. Taking a few moments to settle into the physical body. Feeling the lace edge of the foot pressing down into the floor. And imagining that there is a penguin egg, you are holding a little baby penguin egg between the inner thighs and the pelvic floor. A subtle drawing in, drawing up. And begin to initiate samavriti. Equal inhales to equal exhales. In yoga asana, we find the word asana and it means shape or to stop, to halt. So on the path of yoga, we use the physical practice to stop the physical body and eventually stop thought. So as you sit in your meditation, noticing if the mind trends out, And then continue to bring it home to its anchor point, the breath, the body. The state of meditation happens right before the state of samadhi. As you close yourself off from the external world, you notice that you can find everything you're looking for on the inner terrain. Find sukha, sweet space, lots of space. And scan the body and notice if you can find dukkha, heaviness, not much space, contractile function in the body.
become increasingly curious about warmth in the body? And then notice if there is some coldness in the body. Maybe the back of the triceps, maybe your lower back, your forehead, your lips. Now find your lungs, the faculty of breath, and begin to play with the top of your inhalation. That fullness, abundance, and at the bottom of the exhale, notice the emptiness, perhaps a longing. We outsource our uh, self-esteem, we outsource our direction of education sometimes. And our yoga practice is all about finding our own aesthetic, our own determination of beauty. to put our stamp of approval on any shape we take, any breath we take, any action we take. It's about building self-trust. Adding the pelvic floor into the inhale and the exhale, again like a penguin holding their egg. As you inhale, lift the pelvic floor up. And as you exhale, let it go. Inhale, pull up on the pelvic floor. And exhale, let it go.
changing the direction of the pelvic floor as you inhale, let it be soft. And as you exhale, lift the pelvic floor up into the upper palate of the mouth. Inhale, let it go. Exhale, lift the pelvic floor, draw it upward to the upper palate of the mouth. And release. Release the pelvic floor. Breathe naturally. It's vast and limitless. It's about potential and possibility. It's music that is yet to be written and enjoyed art that has not yet been painted or seen. It's collaboration with your creativity. What is your sacred mudra, your stamp of approval? This morning's physical practice is about faith and trust in self. And there's three ingredients. The first is integrity. When my words, my actions, and my deeds all line up. So if I say I want to learn crow or headstand or some transition, I commit myself to the practice, to the uncovering, to the failing and the succeeding. The next element is positive self-talk. I allow myself to celebrate my little wins, encourage myself to show up when it's hard. And finally, it's a pinch of magic. A belief that anything is possible.
self-trust. A belief in you and your capabilities. A belief that you are exactly where you need to be. Drop your chin and let some light into the eyes. And then extending the legs out in front and meet me on your back. You can send your legs to the ceiling for a few moments. You might like to hit the legs, wiggle the toes. Notice if they've fallen asleep on you. Lowering the feet to the floor for Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined butterfly. Bring your hands to your abdomen and begin to activate the Ujjaya Pranayama. A slight restriction on the back of the throat. Inhale, exhale through the nose. This morning's practice, we're going to dive into some building blocks of hand balancing, and then we can add more elements on. I think about it as Lego, they all link together. Extend your arms up like your palms are pressing into the ceiling and look at all 10 of your fingers. Lift your knees up off the floor and touch your knees to just below your, or just above your elbow joint. So the palms are still fanned wide. Now you're reaching to the upper corner of the mat. Flex your feet and then lift the neck and shoulders and put your knees close to your armpits. You'll notice that the upper back is protracted. Now release the neck and shoulders and feel the knees glide against the backs of the arms. Do that a couple more times, crunching up, squeezing with the fingertips, protracting the shoulders, heels to the bottom. Release the neck and shoulder. Last one, coil up, compress, reach through the fingertips. Slide the knees down the arms, cross your ankles and rock up to a seat and then on to all fours. So some of my students design this as we call it pickles the angry cat. So imagining you're opening two jars of pickles and you're spinning the eyes of the elbows forward. So there's pickles and then tuck your toes and round the upper back. There's the angry cat. So protract the shoulders beautiful. Now retract the shoulders, the elbows could change, they don't need to. Now protract the shoulders, tuck the ribs to the lower hips, and then retract the shoulders. Do that a couple more times. Get familiar with moving just the scapula, the bones on the backs of your shoulders. So when in doubt in an inversion, push the floor away, no matter which inversion you're taking. A couple more rounds, protracting the shoulders, then retracting the shoulders. This time, protract the shoulders, tuck your toes like a dog or cat about to pounce. and then strike back, downward dog. Taking a few moments to feel the backs of the legs. So this is playtime, this is about magic, this is about possibility, and as mentioned, you're gonna be very kind to yourself. 
Next, inhale, extend your right leg up. Bend your knee, open the hip, point your toes toward the floor, knee to the ceiling. Eyes forward, step your right foot between your hands, drop your back knee. Straighten your front leg, kick your heel down into the earth. So a key ingredient to the inverted practice is mobility in the hamstrings. It's also really good when you're tying your shoes and getting older. There's so many reasons why. Notice the front hamstrings on that right leg. Sorry, the front leg and the hamstrings. You don't have hamstrings on the front of your leg. And then take a lunge back into that front knee, kick out through the back leg. Now you've got Hanuman splits in the back leg. Plant your left palm, reach your right arm up and feel the upper back. Eyes down, hands down, slide back, downward dog. Again, you might bend the knees, notice the backs of the legs. Extend your left leg up. Bend your knee, stack your hip, point your knee to the ceiling, point your toes to the floor. Send your leg high, gaze forward, step your left foot between your hands, drop your knee, straighten your leg. So when I was learning to take inversions, I had a really young baby and I didn't want him to wake up from his nap. So I had to be light as a feather when I was jumping back and forward. So imagine that you too have a sleeping baby next to you and you do not want to wake them. Take a lunge back into that left knee, kick out through the right, feel the alignment of that back leg, plant your right palm, reach your left arm up and gaze to your thumb. So the drishti, the gazing point, we know this is important, but inverted practices, the eyes are the most important. It's like an extra point of contact. I think of it a little bit like Spider-Man throwing a web across a building. Bring your hands to the earth. This time, step forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Stand tall, reach the arms high. Release the arms for three rounds of Nali Kriya. Bring your feet about as wide as your mat. Imagine that you're sitting nice and low, sort of like a goddess. It's done on the exhalation. Make sure you hyperextend your elbows. If you're bending your elbows, it's hard to get the lock. So straighten your arms, take an inhale. Exhale completely, pull the belly back. Release your belly, take a breath. So this is a key piece for you to get light in your press ups. Take an inhale, exhale completely, hold yourself empty, lift it up. Release your belly, final round. Take an inhale, exhale, Hold yourself empty, lift the pelvic floor, lock it. Release your belly, samastitihi. Find the ujjayi. Find a gazing point. So here we have mountain pose, the bones are stacked, we're ready, not a lot of effort. Eventually our inversions are very similar to this, not a lot of effort. 
Surya Namaskara, a inhale stretch up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step walk, float back, eyes forward, low push up. Stretch your belly, lift your heart. Downward dog, slide back. So we've done downward dog a couple times, but you might want to sway your hips and lift your legs. You might not quite be ready to halt or stop. But we just want to invite the body to feel warm and lubricated. Completing your exhale, eyes forward, top of the mat. Lengthen, find space. Fold in. Reach your arms above head, reach up. Release the arms. Inhale up. Exhale, dive, clear the abdomen. Inhale, lengthen. Step walk, fly back, lower. Roll over the toes, lift the sternum. Slide back, downward dog. So even now you have an access point to Nali Kriya. Begin to draw the abdomen back, stretch through the legs. We are able to practice whatever it is we want to practice whenever we want. So if you're curious about that belly lock, then play with it here. Completing your exhale, eyes forward, top of the mat. Lengthen. Bow, stand tall, reach high, release the arms, inhale up, exhale fold, inhale lengthen, step walk, sail back, low push up, stretch your belly, lift your heart, Downward dog, glide back. So again, it's your stamp of approval. And now is where we take responsibility for our shapes and say, I'm not going to move, shake, twist, move. I'm just going to land here. And in that landing, I shut out the world around me. Completing your exhale, eyes forward, feet forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Stand tall, reach high. Release the arms. Bring your feet hip distance apart and meet me in a squat at the top of the mat. So there's a few different variations of bakasana. We're going to keep adding on, but this is relevant if you're working headstand transitions. All of this stuff is Lego. So we don't often learn a low bum crow, but it's very important if you're trying headstand to side crow or headstand to ashta or headstand to uh, crow. So planting the palms, take them a little bit wider than usual, and then upward facing dog your chest. Stay really low to the floor, point one toe, and then point the other. So I want you so low that you could just about kiss the floor. In fact, kiss the floor. Release your feet gently to the earth so it should be nice and easy. Meet me back in a squat. Okay, some of you look still kind of high bum. So let's go high bum sort of crane. It's a little bit of a different placement. My entry point, I'm on a perch. I tuck my knees into my armpits. And then I'm going to tip it forward, point one toe, point both toes. So we've got this high variation of bakasana. This is how most people learn bakasana. Release your feet, meet me in a squat. 
So you might be working one or the other, but we're gonna play with the glide and the slide. And this is really important as we start to add other hand balances in. So you imagine you've got a thigh master between your thighs and you're just gonna go low bum, high bum, low bum, high bum, okay? And you might fall on your head, I, you might need a pillow. So if you watch me for a beat, here I am, low, high. Low, I'm gonna flex my feet, upward facing dog my chest, and then I'm gonna point my toes, lift my bum. So let's do a couple high bum, low bum crows. And for some of you, it might just be a regular crow. You might have your head on the ground, that's fine. Little bit of play time, glide your knees. Two, <laughs> yeah, that's it, one, very nice, beautiful. So there's stage one. Flip the toes forward. Let's take Padahastasana. Put your hands under your feet. Inhale to lengthen. And exhale to fold. So that high bum, low bum thing is relevant for jumping back, jumping in, and transitioning from any headstand to hand balance. When you're jumping back from crow, I see a lot of people land in low push-up, but I prefer not. I see a lot of jamming in the shoulders, it looks messy, and you wake the sleeping baby. So let's play with a crow jump back into high plank. Here we are in our little squat, and stop at whatever bus stop. So if you watch what happens, I imagine I have trampolines on my arms, and if you're trying to press from crow to handstand, it's the same thing. So I have little trampolines on my arms and I'm gonna low bum crow and then I'm gonna shoot my hips back and end up in a high bum as I transition to, crow, to high plank. So here I am, this is a high bum crow. I'm like, okay, the teacher's like, jump back. I'm like, okay, I am ready. I go low bum to gain some spring and I shoot back. So the same is true if you're gonna shoot up into a handstand. Ready? Let's see what happens. Crow to high plank. Tuck your knees on the backs of your arms. Teacher says jump back, beautiful. Let's do that a couple times. Try to get a bit more height, like you're going handstand. Go, Aliza, up, up, that's it. Gorgeous. Nicely done, let's meet in downward facing dog. Dropping down onto the knees for headstand, tripod headstand. If you need a wall, take a wall. This is definitely the shape of a triangle and then we'll put this all together to flow. My palms are planted. One of the most common things I see in women is a weakness in the pecs. So you're gonna squeeze your elbows together. Palms plant, the head is down. For some of us, we might work downward dog and that'll be good. Some of us, the knees will come on the backs of the arms and some of us, the legs will go to the ceiling. So set yourself up for your tripod headstand. If you need a wall, use a wall. Catch the knees on the backs. Beautiful, so for those of you that are upside down, like get lighter in your head by reaching up through the legs. It's not a dense, heavy energy. It's actually quite vibrant and joyful. Two. One. Come all the way down. Last little element of the tripod, looking good. So in third series, we're taking headstand and then we're taking all these hand balance variations. Then we vinyasa out. So some of you might know this, so I apologize if it's old news, but watch what happens. So I hollow my belly. It's like a pike from Shirshas in a traditional headstand. So I'm in my little teddy bear stand. I'm all the way up. I've done my side crow, whatever I've done. 
I'm gonna take my bottom back behind me. My elbows are nice and firm. I'm gonna look at my toes. I'm gonna put on some roller skates and I'm gonna skate back chaturanga. See what happens. Headstand, tripod. And again, if, you're, if your bus stop is just to play with downward dog on your head, that's perfect. Elbows nice and tight, Caroline. Take a pike, put on your roller skates, peek at your toes, light as a feather, the baby is sleeping, chaturanga, float back, beautiful, up dog, gorgeous. Down dog. Nice. Set your eyes, take a moment, how am I? Eyes forward, step walk, float to the top. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bow. Stand tall, reach high. Release your arms. Bending into the knees, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step walk, fly back, low push up. Stretch your belly, lift your heart. Downward dog. Lift your right leg up. Step it through. Arms up. Standing split. Flex the foot in the sky and then point the foot in the sky. Use your glute to lift your leg really high and then plant the palms. If there's a wall behind you, great. If not, good luck. Hop one, hop two, hop three. Step walk, float back, eyes forward, lower. Stretch your belly, lift your heart. Downward dog. Lift your left leg up. Step it through. Arms up. Standing split, tip it forward, point the foot in the sky. Really activate the glute. You could stay just the way you are or plant the palms, hop one, hop two, hop Three, step walk, float back, eyes forward, lower. Stretch your belly, lift your heart. Downward dog, slide back. So you could take or leave that. We'll do it quite quickly for the next two rounds. But if you ever want to pepper handstands in, that's a really great way. What is your stamp of approval? Completing your exhale, eyes forward, top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Bow. Sit on your throne, arms up. Stand tall. Bend your knees, believe in magic. Fold forward, forehead to shins. Lift your heart. Sail back, chaturanga or skip it. Ride your inhale, show me your heart. Downward dog. Right leg up. Step it through. Reach up. Standing split or a handstand kick and vinyasa back, shoot the feet back, low push up. Stretch your belly, lift your heart. Downward dog, lift your left leg up. Step it through, arms up. Hands down, it's a standing split or a kick up to a handstand and vinyasa back, feet back to lower. Big inhale lifts you up. Big exhale strikes you back. 
Put your stamp of approval on it if you need a child's pose. Honor that. Three. Two. One. Eyes forward, top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Fold. Sit on your throne, arms up. Stand tall. One more, I want you to fly. Bend your knees, arms up. Fold in half. Lift your heart. Step walk, fly back, lower. Big inhale, peels the chest open. Exhale back, right leg up. Step it through. Arms up. Do not wake the baby, standing split. Some of you might kick up into a handstand and vinyasa back lower. Big up. Take it back. Left leg lifts. Step it through. Reach up. Hands plant. It's a standing split or a kick up. And a float back lower. Ride your inhale. Ride your exhale, downward facing dog land. Paw your hands back to your feet, padangustasin. Catch your big toes, look up. Fold forward. To trust oneself is to be integral. It means what I think, what I say, what I do line up. So if I say I'm a yogi, then I'm a yogi. If I say that I believe that a handstand, headstand is possible for me, then I practice it. I celebrate my little wins and I believe in magic. Inhale, lengthen. Meet me in a squat for three little handstand hops up to the top of our mat. So planting the palms, clearing the belly, grip with the fingers, hop one, hop two, bum over the shoulders, hop three, inhale, lengthen, fold forward, Sit in your throne, Utkatasana. Bend your elbows, thread your left arm under, thread your left leg over, coming into Garudasan Eagle. So this isn't much different from a handstand, honestly. It's like a weight transfer. So when you're taking a one-legged balance pose, treat it as relevant as you would an inversion. Keep your arms tangled up, take airplane, and the baby is still sleeping, you're gonna step back for a beautiful crescent, still eagle arms. Untangle the arms. Hands to your heart, hook your left elbow over your right knee. Some of you might open the arms. You can kick out through the back heel. I'm more curious about the twist than anything else. So the upper body I care about. The eyes come down, the hands come down half split or full split. Straighten that front leg. So if you like to go all the way, go all the way. So handstand or forearm stand, there's a couple ways to get into it. Three really. You can kick up, you can hop up, or you can press up. 
So for me personally, I want to make sure all three of those I at least consider because one might work better for me. Is there more possible wiggle a little bit further to see like, huh, have I been living in a box? The transitions between the poses are basically handstands, I promise. The cleaner we can be between the transitions, the easier the inversions are. Take a lunge back into that front knee for Ardha Chandrasan Half Moon. The baby is sleeping. Go right hand, right foot. Go up. Some of you might bend the leg in the sky, you might catch the foot, lean the ears back, get explosive. Yeah, so if you feel like you're buckling under the bottom arm, get buoyant in the shoulder. Three. Two. One. Standing split. And then step your feet together at the top of your mat and pivot your knees to the left for side crow. Some of us, this will be good enough. We'll just kind of snuggle in and feel it. For some of you, you might take your left hand to your right knee, pick it up, side crow. So I want your face to be kind of low to the floor because I want you to think about taking it into headstand from here. Release your feet, knees through center, inhale, lengthen, bow. Give yourself enough space to transition from crow to headstand to vinyasa. Fan your feet, remember you get off at whatever bus stop is yours, hands to prayer. Bakasana, tip it forward, it could be a high bum crow, a crane. Then fan your feet so the head is low, lower your head, headstand, elbows tight, and then take your legs into a pike, put your roller skates on, float back. Stretch your abdomen, slide back, beautiful, paw your hands back to your feet. Meet me in a squat. Okay, so this is the hopping, right? And if it is truly a practice, you're gonna take what you just learned last time and you're gonna implement what you've learned. Grip with your fingertips. You've got Pickles the angry cat. Your bum is gonna be over your shoulders. Let's hop three times. I want hang time. Hop one. Hop two. Hop three. Inhale, lengthen, bow, sit on your throne, arms up, bend your elbows, thread your right arm under, thread your right leg over. So again, I can't stress this enough, everything is everything. your arms tangled up but take an airplane leg with the right. The baby is sleeping. Step back. A big crescent with eagle arms. Send your arms up. Twisted side angle. Hook your right elbow nice and tight to your left knee and maybe you open the arms and again I care not so much about your back leg, I care about your chest and your shoulders. How does your breath work in a twist? Eyes down, hands down, Hanuman or Arda Hanuman, straighten the leg. So you might stop there, you might go to the full depth of the shape. So for those of you that find this really easy, integrate your thighs, zipper your thighs together and reach your hands up. So 
So this is so crucial to Pinchamayarasana, handstand, headstand even. Soften your mouth and again, search for sweet space, sukha. Returning to a lunge, remember every transition matters. Ardha Chandrasan, rise up, left foot, left hand. High to the sky. Lean your ears back. Imagine that this is your handstand or your headstand. So if you feel shaky here, maybe there should be a block under your hand so you feel a bit of freedom. together, meet me in a little squat for side crow. Pivot your knees to face the right. Tiny little package, tiny little package. Maybe you pick it up and fly. Three, two, one. Release your feet. Knees through center, meet me in a squat. So take it or leave it. This is headstand to side crow. If you're working side crow, work side crow. If you're working headstand, work headstand. There's a couple little tricks. This I find one of the most challenging of the transitions from headstand. I'll do it so you can see my elbows. So there's usually tricks involved. So of course you want to be able to go upside down. That's stage one. Legs don't have to go up, but they can. So a couple things. Watch what happens in my knees. So I twist my lower half of my body, but I'm not getting lazy and saggy and like jello-y at all. My knees twist. My elbow is gonna knock in. So you see that? My elbow knocks in as I pull my belly, tiny little package round in to catch my knee lift up. So when I'm going back to headstand, I'm going to zipper my bum to the ceiling in order to get my head up. Okay, let's see what happens. Headstand to side crow. Now if you'd prefer a side crow or a headstand or a crow, you get off the bus where you feel like you should get off the bus. Slow and steady. Beautiful, knock that elbow in. Yeah, beautiful, Elisa. Slow and steady, beautiful, Vasti. Yeah, go for it, beautiful, Baya. Couple more breath. Yeah, and remember, it's like we celebrate. We celebrate that we tried. If we've never done this before, how the heck will we ever be able to do it? About 15 more seconds to play. Yeah, good work. Yeah, Isabel. Beautiful. Oh. Come all the way down. Let's do a quick wrist opener. So these are things we're going to continue to build on. Flip your fingers to face your knees and sit back. Okay, so that's headstand side crow. We can do all sorts of cool, fun transitions. We'll likely look at one more. I'd like to change directions for a while and talk about Pincha Maharasana. Couple things, and I talked about this earlier. Lean back, give the hands a shake. So I am generalizing, but I know for a lot of my female friends, it's more, it's more challenging than my male friends about Pincha. 
And again, when your shoulders dip down past your, um, whether that 90 degree, because here we have skeleton, right? It's like bone on bone, easy peasy. But the moment we go here, we're going into uncharted territory. We call it negative, like your body's in a negative position, so it's kind of hard to hold it. So we're gonna play with what that means, and we're gonna enter it a couple different ways. So if you watch me, and feel free to have a wall behind you or in front of you, but if you watch what happens as I kick up, I'm gonna walk in. So I want my foot as close to my elbow as possible so it's less of a kick, but do you see that negative? I now go into a negative and a lot of people will be like, oh God, I can't, it's too much. And it is, it's a lot. So I'm gonna go into the negative, I'm gonna add weight to my top leg and I'm gonna float myself up and then you'll notice I stack my bones and I eventually end up in that bone on bone structure so it's less work. So you might use a wall and kick up some of you might, we will look at a press next, but I'd like to see what we're working with for pinch up. If you wanna rest, rest. If you wanna play with the transition from negative, go negative and just go negative, positive, gorgeous E. Walk it in, so for those of you that don't have a lot of hamstring mobility, you gotta go negative. Yeah, Kathleen, go for it. Go negative, nice little pop up. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Couple more moments. Give a big kick. You got it. Big, beautiful kick. And once you, yes, that's it. Now, yeah, gorgeous, Nada. Two. Big kick. Big, strong kick. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Come all the way down. Sit back. Couple things. Yeah, you might want to stretch your hands. So a couple things. So Pinchamirasana technically to get out of it is a vinyasa. So before we add on to the pincha and the pressing and the other cool things we can do, what ends up happening is you're in pincha, so you're on your forearms, you're balancing, and then you fall to chaturanga. So how it's done, um, I'll show you the full variation, but we're gonna actually work it from the ground up. I'm in pincha, and I shoot back chaturanga. So let's play with from the bottom to the top. Meet me on your forearms, but you don't have to go pincha. Your bottom is gonna be pretty high. Eyes forward, chaturanga. Chaturanga, beautiful, yes, pinch up. <laughs> Ready, chaturanga, shoot forward. Pinch up. I know, that's the hard part. One more time, shoot forward, chaturanga. Pinch up. Nice. Lower to the knees, sit back. Okay, so that could be your work. That's a pretty sweet place, but it's very unusual. So I often think you need to know, you need to be two, two moves ahead of yourself. So I'm in pincha, but I'm already thinking about chaturanga. So you know now that the transition is actually forward. Okay, so a lot of people are here and they think they're gonna jump their hands back, but it's actually rock forward. So what I would love for us to do is to come up into your pincha. You could use a wall if you want, and there's this moment where you're a little bit in a Scorpio, scorpion, and then you can shoot back chaturanga. You do not have to do this. You do not need a wall you might land on your face. So pinch my rasana. So get upside down, and then once you're upside down, bend your knees, and chaturanga. It's kind of aggressive and super masculine. Nice. And chaturanga. <laughs> right, it's 
like juggling. Ready, chaturanga. Good. Nicely done. Sit back for a moment. You can continue to play with this if you're loving it. So from the ground up, when you're learning a shape, let's say you want to learn handstand to crow or crow to handstand, sometimes it's easier to learn handstand to crow first because the crow to handstand is like a big push. So let's play with forearm stand with a little tiny crow legs. Eventually it's lotus, but let's just work it from the ground up. So here I am, I've got my Pinchamayarasana arms. I'll tuck my toes and walk my knees in really nice and tight and put them in my armpits. And as I lean forward, pick up one foot and then the other foot. So it's a little tiny baby forearm crow. So you got pinch my ross and you tuck your knees into your armpits, lift one, lift two, ready, little tiny package. Yeah, stay three. Stay two. Stay one. Beautiful, come all the way down. Last little piece. So I want to show you this only because some of you are probably visual learners. My bum is responsible for so much of this action. So I'm pretty low to the ground. I feel like I'm going to face smash and it's not comfortable. So I'm here. My bum leads the way. So I'm froggying my feet. I'm flexing my glutes in order to get myself up. Froggy, 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 froggy. It is the grossest feeling I've ever felt. So you might want to play with that. You might just take a balasana and we'll change direction. So I'll give you about 10 seconds. Bum, 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 bum. Three. Two. One. Very nice. Come down. Downward facing dog. Strike back. Eyes forward. Step walk. Float to the top. Inhale, lengthen. Bow. Stand tall, reach high. Release your arms. Take a step out with your left foot and pigeon toe your feet. Catch your waist, lift your heart, prosarita A, bow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. So for those of you that work a headstand press or a forearm press, maybe this is where you do your forearm press, your handstand press, or your headstand press. So if I was working my forearm, I would set it, I would flex my glutes, I would sail upside down. Otherwise, prosarita A, three, two, One. And if your feet are up, put them down. Inhale, lengthen. Catch your waist. Stand up. Arms float open for C. Intertwine your fingers behind your back. Lift your sternum, bend your knees. Flip your seat and fold. Rising all the way up. And again, meeting me in a little squat. So you stay where you are, but I'm gonna go sideways. So little squat. So TT Basana. This is an interesting posture and there's a couple different ways to get into it. First of all, you actually catch 
pretty low and back of your thigh. So in primary series, there's this transition where we go titi basana and then crow. And for a lot of students, they get stuck there for years. So let's just play with titi basana. Okay. So if you see me sideways, I'm going to lift my bottom and then wiggle my shoulders underneath my knees. Nothing might happen. I'm going to walk my feet together. And then this is a bit of a trick. I widen my elbows. So I'm sticking my elbows out. I plant my fingers. And this is a bit of a leap of faith moment where I just have to trust that I will end up on my hands. My bottom is low. My feet are high and my chest is up. Show me what you got. Just a, just a titi basana. Snuggle in, snuggle in, snuggle in. Use bone on bone contact. So sometimes we use too much strength. Yeah, gorgeous, Kathleen. Upward facing dog, your heart. Beautiful. Two. One. Meet me back in a squat unless you slide it back to bakasana. Okay, so I saw a couple people falling on their bottoms. Okay, so what do you think happened there? Because the onus is on the student to be like, what the heck just happened? So my bum is quite heavy. There's a lot of weight down. So to counter that, if you're falling backward, very normal, you're going to upward facing dog your chest. Your whole body is going to say, look down, look down. But the, the remedy is actually to look up. So I want to add something on and you can stay where you are, but we're going to take one knee back and then we're going to extend it out in front and we're going to take one knee back. And I want you to look at me sideways and see what happens. So remember low bum, high bum crow, it's kind of the same concept in the elbow joints. Okay. So here I am. I catch my heels. I, I make sure that my feet come a little bit tighter so that there's this thigh squeezing action, plant the palms, I sit back, okay? So what would this be? This would kind of be a high bum crow, wouldn't it? So then I bend an elbow, low bum crow, high bum, low bum. So let's see if that could work. Titi basana, again, if you're more of a crow person, you do crow. Otherwise, titi basana. You have to believe that this is possible for you. Titi Basan. Sit on your arms. Slide your right leg back, low bum crow. Slide it forward. Other side, slide it back. Slide it forward. Beautiful release. You might have just fallen on your bottom, which is totally fine. Okay. Last piece of the puzzle. This one's a little bit nuts, okay? So we're going to take either one-legged crow, one-legged titi basana, or we're going to transition from headstand. So first option is you'll take your right foot in front of you, same entry point, claw it through center, widen the elbow, take your left leg, tuck it into crow, you'll take your crow, and then you'll take your titi basana leg. Otherwise, option two, I'll demo it and I'll demo it from the back. So here I am. I'm in my teddy bear. So you know you need to catch your upper thigh in, in kind of inner groin. So it's a bit unusual. So I'm prepping the lower half of my body. Okay. I'm going to spin it to catch this thigh in TT in this one crow. I catch my crow. Then I catch my TT and I lift up. And then I lower my head, my TT leg goes, then my crow leg goes. Other side. Crow, TT, head, TT leg. All right. Either you work crow, you work TT basana, or you go headstand, the, the, the melange, the blending of the two. You could also just watch. Yeah, nice Fosti. Beautiful Kathleen, pull the pelvic floor in. Gorgeous.
looking good. You guys are amazing. Couple more breaths. <laughs> Beautiful work. Yeah. Sit back if you're complete and shake your hands. So this is a lot and I know that I am a lot, you're a lot, and that's a good thing. Uh, stretch your hands back. So let's look at Pinchamayarasana one more time. When I'm practicing my inversions, I kind of go handstand and then I practice forearm stand stuff and then I go back to handstand so my wrists don't feel too awful. So there was some talk about the press up. We can work a kick up. So I want to show a couple different variations. My wall is there. This sort of a base is actually really good. A headstand base is really solid. So some of you might work a headstand base. I'm a leg's distance from the wall and I'm gonna get my bottom over my shoulders and I'm gonna toe tap the wall. For some of you, you might go forearms wide and you might want to kick up. So this is a bigger kick, but the wall is then there and then I can find my way through center. So for those of you that want to work a press, and you might have already done this, you might like blocks underneath your feet. So easier wide-legged, but because there was a question about legs together, it's a bigger dip and a bigger push, and it's more symbolic or similar to when you're pushing up from here. Okay. A couple more moments to play with Pinchamayarasana. Either kick up, press up, you could even jump up. Goody. Yeah, nice Vasti. It's kind of like lifting wet cement. Nice E, you're very close. Kathleen, you're very close. Ready, beautiful nods. Nicely done. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Come all the way down and sit back for a moment in child's pose. Rest your forehead to the floor, take a beat. So I want, would like to do one more transition before we close down our practice. We'll need a wall for this. Before I show it to you, I want to explain it to you while you're in child's pose. So handstand, we can use a wall, and then we'll transition to crow pose, using the wall, pulling the belly in. Then we'll go headstand, and either you vinyasa out there, or you might play with some different variation of like side crow to headstand, or whatever else. Sit back, eyes to me. Okay, ready. So for those of you that are pretty proficient at handstand, this is great. For those of you that want to just play handstand, play handstand. But a wall is nice because then if you feel like you're going to fall, you can toe tap it. So here I am in my handstand and I've got the wall there to catch me if I need. I'm going to bada kanasana my legs. I'm going to pull my belly in. I'm going to bend, 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 catch my pro. I'm going to widen my feet so I lower my head, tripod, you might vinyasa out, some of you might do side crow pickups, and then you can have your morning coffee. Okay, ready? Handstand or headstand. So this depends on where you're at, and this is where you take the onus upon yourself to say what's in my best interest. So handstand maybe. Use your wall, like don't be afraid of our, our beautiful props and our homes. And then for those of you that are in your headstand or your handstand, maybe you transition to crow. Nice, Isabel, that's perfect. 
Pull it in, pull it in, beautiful. And whatever transition feels like the right one. Beautiful work. Gorgeous. Sit back on your knees. Let's take a couple wrist stretches. Fingertips face our heels, or sorry, our knees. Sit back. so they face out like a little peacock and then bend your elbows away from each other. Flip your fingertips to face your knees, sit back, stretch your hands. Give your hands a little shake. So these are our last three headstands. So you might opt to say no thank you. You might take a hip opener instead. So we're gonna take three headstands from second series. The, the transition is the vinyasa out. So a wall behind you is good and you might just work a tripod the whole time, but make sure there's a wall if you've never done these before. So option one would be your tripod for five and then you either come down or you vinyasa out, but I'm gonna demo the ones that I'd like us to play with. First, catching the creases of our elbows. Our elbows are in front of our face. The position of the head is closer to the hairline. So here I am, I come up, five breath, pop, pop, pike, float, vinyasa. Second one, we call it the forklift. So the palms are facing up, I float up, five, hop, vinyasa. And then the third one, it's super unusual. I find it actually the most challenging. You catch your traps, so the muscles by your neck, you're gonna catch your traps, pull your elbows forward, come up, flip, pike, float, vinyasa. Okay, first one, tripod headstand, or if you wanted to join me, catching your elbow joints in front of your head, you could do that. Come all the way up. So remember, we're just building Lego. So tripod or teddy bear might be where you stop. It's a good Lego piece. Three. Two. One. Maybe come down, maybe flip the palms, vinyasa out. Nicely done. Maybe repeat what you've just done. Maybe lower your head to the floor, forklift, tops of the hands down, float up. You'll notice there's a little more pressure through the neck, so you could always go back to the first. Stretch up through the legs, three, two, one. Maybe flip, flip the palms, take a pike, float, vinyasa. Last one, again, you could repeat the one you just did. You could take child's or a hip opener. So my head is down, I'm gonna catch my traps, pull my elbows in front of my face, float up. Tone the outer glutes. Drishti is so crucial. Three, two, one. Untangle the arms. Maybe it's a vinyasa out. Yeah, nicely done. Shift your weight forward to plank and come down onto your tummy. Spin over onto your back. Tuck your knees in toward your chest. Give yourself a hug. Take the arms out wide. Let the knees fall to the left. Let the eyes fall to the right. Mm -hmm. 
So to trust oneself, there are three important pillars. The first is integrity. It means that if I say that's what I want, I'm going to do it. It's my words, my thoughts, my, my deeds all line up. The second is I'm, I'm, I'm celebrating myself. I'm celebrating trying. I'm not saying I suck. At least I tried. And then eyes through center, knees through center, opposite side. And it's this belief in magic. Let any stress roll away off the body. And then bringing the knees all the way through center. Giving yourself a hug and lying on your back for Shavasana Corpse Pose. Drape your shoulders under your back to cradle your heart. Put a blanket over your body. Adorn yourself, as I like to say. Take a big inhalation. Ah. One more big inhale. Ah. Let it dissolve. The practice of yoga is now complete. Leave the past in the past, let it die. They say the difference between those who are great and those who are good, it's all mind game stuff. So positive self-talk and celebration is really important. Imagine your five-year-old self if you were like, why can't you do that? Why can't you color inside the lines? How compelled would that five-year-old be to color inside the lines? And why would they be compelled? Because they felt scared. To believe in magic is the opposite of, of fear and pressure and expectations. A dragonfly spends most of its life as a nymph underwater. During its time underwater, it mutates quite a few times and it never leaves the water until eventually it has this strong desire to crawl up a stalk out into the world. And when a dragonfly does this, its shell cracks and its little crumpled up wings are exposed. The water from which the nymph has spent its life is living inside that dragonfly and extends out into those wings. So a dragonfly learns to fly, becomes a dragonfly because of all its evolutions under the water. There are big things that are about to happen music and poetry and paintings and yoga and possibilities that we have not yet experienced. For that, there should be a lot of excitement, possibility.
Our yoga practice is to create a container to block ourselves from the external world so we can to discover what we are made of and what we believe is beautiful. This is your sacred stamp of approval. This is your aesthetic. This is what you know to be true because of your up dogs and your down dogs. It is the reliance upon self because other people will mess up and fail. Take a deep inhale. Ha. <sighs> Take another big inhale. Ha. <sighs> Bring some movement to your fingers. Bring some movement to your toes. Stretch your arms long overhead, point your toes. Tuck your knees towards your belly to roll over to the right. And meet me in a comfortable cross-legged seat. For our pranayama, you might choose to remain on your back. That's a good option. But if you'd like to be upright, then meet me in a seat. You could lean against a wall. So we transition now, and if we look at the eight limb path of yoga, we see pranayama happens, and, and then we move to meditation, but it's all kind of interwoven. So we'll start with samabhriti, equal inhale to equal exhale. I'll count you through the first couple rounds. Exhale completely. Inhale five, four, Three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. On your own. And release the breath. Ujjayi triangle. There is a five beat retention at the top of the inhale. I'll cue you through the first couple rounds and I'll hand you the torch. Exhale completely. Inhale five, four, three, two, one. Lock the chin, lift the pelvic floor, bow the head. Three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Lock the chin, lift the pelvic floor, soften the shoulders. Three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one on your own.
Release your breath, free breathe. Ujjayi square, a five beat inhale, a five beat retention, a five beat exhale, and five beat retention on the bottom. We'll do a couple rounds together and then on your own. Exhale completely. Inhale five, four, three, two, one, lock the chin, lift the pelvic floor, soften the shoulders. Three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Lift the pelvic floor, lengthen the spine, bow the chin. Three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one, lock the chin, bow the head. Three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Lift the pelvic floor, bow the chin, the spine is spacious. Three, two, one, on your own. Complete that last round. And this is a three minute hold and we're gonna count our inhales to exhales for this three minute uh, breath. You can use retentions, not necessary. You do what feels right for you in this moment. Exhale completely, begin.
and release. Free breathe. Notice the after effect. Again, we learn to outsource how, how we feel and what's normal and, and where we should be in our lives based on what we see around us. But our yoga, our meditation, our pranayama practice is supposed to draw us back in, our true north. Three rounds of Kabbalah Bhati, 50 pulses each, will start slow and speed it up. Take an inhale. Let it go. What's the after effect? What is it like to be you? Second round, a little bit quicker, take an inhale. Let it go. Final round, even quicker. Take an inhale. of Satali, this is cooling breath. It, we're inhaling through a looped tongue through our mouths and if you are unable to genetically loop the tongue, you can put your tongue behind your two front teeth to inhale through the mouth and exhale through the nose. Take an inhale. Notice what you notice. And then bow the chin, let some light into the eyes. And make your way onto your back for a very brief Shavasana. So lie down to integrate what you just learned. Drape the shoulders under the back, take a big inhale. Ah. One more. <sighs> bringing movement to your hands, bringing movement to your feet. Stretching the arms long overhead, tuck your knees towards your belly to roll over to the side and rise up to a seat. And bring your hands to your heart. 
and close your eyes and seal the practice, but know that there's nothing left to do. You did it all, right? So congratulations for that. Inhale for Om. Om. Namaste.